I don't know whether it's unique for um, five business organizations to come together in this way, but it's, but it's certainly unusual. But I also think very appropriate, you know, given that the theme of today is, is, is building connections and, and collaborations. So, and we do work together and it's great to have so many, it's a great mixture actually looking at, at all the faces and names, a mixture of, um, you know, old friends, if I can put it that way, but, but, but new, new people as well. So Sally, if you could take me to the next slide and I'll explain what's happening this morning. So we're gonna kick off with, um, with brief presentations from, from each of the organizations. So I'll, I'll kick off followed by Martin, Chief Executive of Burgess Hill Business Parks Association, Lee Farron, East Grinsard, Claire Jones, Hayward Heath, and Steve Sawyer of uh, Manor Royal. Bid. Um, you may find it best, Sally tells me, to go into, because there's so many on the call, you may find it best to go into speaker view, but I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Um, we won't have questions and answers at the end of each sort of brief int introduction, because it would take so long, but please do make, you know, full use of, of the chat function. <laughs> pick up questions and comments from there and we'll discuss them um, a little later. We'll then have breakout rooms. We don't quite know how many yet. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes, but we want to throw all of you up in the air and see how you land in terms of, in terms of breakout rooms and you know, have the opportunity to uh, reacquaint yourself with old friends and to make some, some new, some new uh, connections. Then at the very end, we'll have some final thoughts and finish. We're going to keep the, reopen the breakout rooms and keep them open then until 11 o'clock. You know, formal, formal proceedings, if I can call it that, finish at uh, 10.45, but we'll keep things open if people want to carry on, carry on chatting. Right, next slide, please, Sally. So people are still coming in quite fast, but I'm not going to repeat all that. You'll be, you'll be pleased to know. So the theme of today, power of community, building your business connections. And I have to say that I think that theme is more important than it has, has ever been, probably, given the challenges and to some extent opportunity, the opportunities that we and our, more importantly, our businesses have faced over the last 12 months or so. I'm very keen on the concept of, of collaborating to compete. So collaboration and competition may seem as opposites at the opposite ends of the spectrum. But actually, if you think about it, coming together in order to, in order to compete is a key part of, of what we do as, as, as membership organizations or, or the platform that we provide for our members. It encourages ambition, it, it pools resources, it's, it's, it sparks innovation. But we know that, you know, how can I put this? Occasionally we have a disappointed member, even at GDP, and it tends to be if they come to a member's meeting and, and expect to go away with their clipboard full of sales leads. You know, it doesn't happen that way. It happens much more through, through building networks, building, building connections. And then sort of tangible benefits come from it, perhaps in terms of direct sales, but more likely actually opportunities to build the network and opportunities for collaboration. And I've put, um, you know, I've put three examples there of collaboration, uh, very, very, very familiar ones, I'm sure. We could vote for our favourite. I know the GDB team would vote for Ben and Jerry, but, you know, that, that's, that's their predilection. I'd probably go with yeah, Lennon and McCartney, I think. But, but to some extent, the, 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 there are people with complementary skills, complementary ambition coming together and then being more than the sum of their parts. And that's what collaboration is all about. So that's just to set the scene in terms of the discussion for today. And obviously what we're looking to enhance is, is collaboration, but not just collaboration between the five organizations who are hosting this event but obviously collaboration across our memberships. We do have, I know that many of you are members of more than one of the organizations represented today. And that's great because it demonstrates, it is that demonstrates the, the distinctiveness and the complementarity of our offers. 
Next slide, please, Sally. So I'm now going to put my, having done that introduction on behalf of sort of everyone, I'm now briefly going to put my GDB hat on. And I just wanted to start with what is the distinctiveness of GDB, because we have an lot, awful lot in common, um, the five organisations, but we are also distinctive. And I suppose perhaps the main distinctiveness um, of GDB is, is, is our geography. We cover a big area, we, we cover a big economic area. The, the Gatwick Diamond economy is, is important, not just in regional, um, but in national terms. Obviously, we, we've been hard hit by, by the crisis, but we will come back and, 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 and Gatwick Airport at the heart of the Gatwick Diamond will continue to be a key driver as things uh, go forward. I, I know a bit of our distinctiveness in terms of that geography is that we're not, we're not um, limited by um, local authority boundaries. There is a more formal definition of the, of the Gatwick Diamond, but we, we operate what we like to call porous or, or flexible boundaries in terms of our membership, as you can see by the blurred edges of the diamond. Next slide, please, Sally. And this is what we're all about in terms of our offer. We help our members to be connected. We promote what they do. We support them to achieve their, their ambitions. We keep them informed, including you know, the largest sort of strategic issues that are going on. And the one probably that's most uh, relevant today is the one in the bottom right-hand corner, Boosted. So providing support, including peer support through our special business community. And I think like, like all five organisations, I think we'd all want to stress the importance of, of, of that community. You know, we are not pop-up networking organisations taking advantage of the opportunities to do things on, on, online. We are long established business communities and that applies to GDB, but it also applies to the other four organisations. Next slide, please, Sally. So the power of that, of, that, of that community emerges almost organically through the well-established programs that we provide, you know, the, you know, the events, the networking events, the sort of teaching type events, ask the experts, all with networking opportunities, all with opportunities for businesses to come together. But in recent times, and partly, only partly, but partly in response to the particular challenges that businesses have faced during COVID, we've looked to introduce new initiatives that sort of oil the wheels of that sort of natural process of businesses coming together and collaborating. And this slide really is just intended to give an example of one of them, Diamond Experts. So we do have businesses coming together, sharing information, offering advice on a sort of a friendly, uh, no obligation type basis. So under Diamond Experts, we formalize that to some extent so all the businesses that you can see on this slide, you can see all their logos, they are part of Diamond Experts. And these are business people, businesses with expertise that they've agreed to share with other members on the basis of offering up to 90 minutes free advice to another GDB member. So it's the sort of thing that happens anyway, but we felt that, as I say, particularly in current circumstances, we wanted to give that a, a further a, a further push. So that is just one, one example. New slide, please. And, you know, I just wanted to finish off really by showing that, you know, collaboration does happen. It does work. It's not just me theorizing. It's not wishful thinking. I could have left us with, you know, several slides of businesses that are coming together. These happen to be business members. They've met in other ways as well. It's not all down to GDB, but it's really good to see that sort of collaboration happening and, 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 and in unexpected areas, you know, control energy costs, company based in, um, in, in Red Hill that advises businesses on reducing their energy bills effectively, coming together with one, one, of, our, one of our charity members. We have a strong charities group, Crawley Open House in a sort of a mutually beneficial relationship. And you also see the, the further example there, and I, I won't seek to read them out. So Sally, I think that's my, my last slide, just checking, in case you're gonna surprise me with something. No. 
Okay, so that's just a brief bit of scene setting in terms of what it's all about today. So it's about, the, we're discussing the power of collaboration, the opportunities for building out community, communities, the opportunities for, for coming together to, to the benefit of all. And I've given you a brief introduction as well to, to, to GDB. Um, sorry if it comes across as a little bit of a, of a sales pitch, it's not intended. But, but, but just to give you a flavour of what we are all about. Now then, without further ado, I am now going to hand over to Martin Carr of the Burgess Hill Business Association. Morning. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Garbled, uh, yeah, garbled the name of your organisation there. You, you, you have, but don't worry. There's you might want to repeat it. You know, no, no, no. I've been really well up until that point, but anyway, never mind. Okay, so uh, thank you, Jeff, and good good morning. Uh, as Jeff says, my name is Martin Carr. I'm the uh, chief executive of the Burgess Hill Business Parks Association. Thank you, Martin. Full title. Um, so I started with BHBPA uh, in January 2020, which, in, with with in, with hindsight, it was one hell of a year to start working in, in a business association that has community and business networking at its at its heart. Um, so we've been asked to share some stories this morning about the power of community. And of course, you know, I can think of multiple examples of that where our members have, in, 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 in my view, have contributed very significantly, mightily even, uh, to the local community in Burgess Hill. Uh, but of course, community comes in lots of shapes and sizes. So there's some maybe some fairly obvious ones, BHBPA member Community Transport Sussex, for example has played a clear and very important role in the transporting of the elderly and the vulnerable to get their COVID-19 vaccination. So that's a, a, a very practical example. Of course, the other thing we've seen during the pandemic has been a collapse in certain sectors, in many sectors really, of, of customer demand. Um, and that has meant uh, that the government has had to step in and oversee unprecedented levels of financial support. Uh, to the to the business community, mainly distributed through local government, which in our case is Mid Sussex District Council. And I think during the course of the pandemic, we as an association and Mid Sussex have become closer, as we've all strived to communicate out to our uh, out to our communities what is available to support them. And I, to be honest, I think all of the associations have played a really powerful community role on this front. And I think if we weren't playing our role in Burgess Hill and the others in East Grinstead and Hayward Seat, et cetera, et cetera, more businesses would have failed. Um, I think the other thing we've, you know, we've all had to switch like we are this morning. We've all had to switch from physical meetings, which we enjoy to virtual meetings. Um, and we've all found ourselves running things like Zoom events. And I think they've transcended the narrow business focus that we might've had more of before. So I think a good example of that is our very well attended International Women's Day event when we had four of our highly regarded female leaders share their personal experiences on facing up to challenges. And that was very much the theme of the IWD this year. And I guess at its heart is self-confidence and mental health, which we know has been a big issue. Um, and people for sure grow when they feel that they're part of a community and particularly a community that's brave enough to share things that matter. Uh, I think we've also seen that in one of our interest groups, uh, the post-Brexit interest group in terms of getting ready for the end of last year's transition. And yes, that was practical, but it also people really felt that just the getting together to collaborate and share and look at common problems has helped them. Um, and we intend to continue to build on that uh, even as the pandemic uh, recedes with other interest groups. I think one of the other things we've seen a lot of is professional services companies have run a lot of webinars and made the sort of their observations about government support freely available. Now, admittedly, some of these events have been better attended than others. And just as the word Zoom has come unwittingly into our language, I think the other expression of feeling zoomed out has also come into it as well as we've all sort of felt virtual meeting fatigue at times. But there's, but there's one example I really want to draw attention to, 
uh, who I think has really contributed, and it's the way they've contributed during the pandemic, and it's Sherard's Law, who are a member of our association and, and probably others. Um, and of course, if you know them, they're real specialists in employment law. I just want to share some key facts. These guys, first of all, they were very quick and responsive. So their first webinar went out on the global pandemic on the 17th of April last year. But they were not just quick, they were persistent. So they've done over 16 webinars, some on their own, most of them on their own, but also with, uh, with others. And they've covered a real breadth of topics, redundancy, restructure, collective redundancy, flexible furlough schemes, returning to work, the employment landscape after furlough, and the one which is probably my favorite, to jab or not to jab, that is the question. Um, so they've covered a real breadth of topic, but have also been creative and accessible. They've had their own YouTube um, channel, and they've had a rather, I think that they've had over a thousand delegates, and that's a lot of people to be connecting with um, uh, on, on, on just those sorts of subjects. And, and here are some of the quotes that they, or some of the testimonials they got back. And I think we would probably all veritably die for some of these sorts of comments. Quotes, I found the information you provided at the beginning of the pandemic really useful, quick and succinct, and it came to us exactly when we needed it. Thank you. Another one, this is amazing, Sherrods, are absolutely excelling themselves during this horrible time. Can I just say thank you for the help during the lockdown period, your online videos and template fellow agreement helped us enormously. I've decided that we will use Sherrard's going forward in our employment issues. Now, this is not a sales pitch of Sherrard's. I have nothing to do with them. But the reason I share it as an example, because I think there are some lessons in here is how to contribute to the community. Heaven forbid we have to go through this sort of thing again. Yes, be quick, be responsive, be persistent, be creative, be all of those things. But I think above all, think, think about what people are gonna find really useful. So when they issued some FAQs and an agreement template to help, help to put people onto furlough leave, I got, I got so many positive responses from people when I shared that on behalf of the association. Things like, so grateful for this, it's been invaluable for my work and now my husband's also. Thank you, Sarah, Harry, etc. Hope to see you soon. So at my punchline at the end is, is, you know, there is definitely power in community, but there's value in thinking about what that community really needs from you. And then the community will look after you in due course. So that was, that was my five minutes sharing. Thank you, Martin, that was great. Um... I'm glad to see that people are making use of chat at the moment. It's mostly for introductions, but please do add sort of comments and questions as well as, as the session continues. Right, so from Martin, it's over to Lee of East Grinstead. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, everybody. Uh, firstly, thank you for setting this up. I think it's a terrific op opportunity for all the networking uh, organisations to actually be seen um, as one unit. Um, my name is Lee, I live in East Grinstead and my business is based in the centre of East Grinstead. I'm the CEO of East Grinstead Business Association. And during this quick overview of mine, um, it will be quick as I've just come back from a week's holiday, which was to Cornwall. Um, I will refer to us as the EGBA because I find that slips off the tongue a little easier than East Grinstead Business Association. Um, let me talk about East Grinstead. Um, it's probably best known as, a, as an historic, pretty market town. Uh, it's popular tourist hotspots with our famous Tudor High Street, quirky boutique shops and many local attractions. Uh, the train station is an end of line terminal for the commuters doing their rat race to London, but it's also the end of line of the famous Bluebell Railway. So we sit very differently to some of the other towns in Sussex and mid-Sussex. Um, and we can sometimes, when it comes to Sussex, be felt that we are a bit of a northern outpost because um, we're at the top corner of West Sussex and mid-Sussex and bordered by Surrey, Kent and East Sussex. And I know through experiences, some of our businesses um, have a sense of being isolated when it comes to why the West Sussex matters 
information and issues. And I know that's a little bit of a controversial statement, but um, you know, our businesses in East Grinstead deal with businesses in Surrey, Kent, uh, East Sussex, because it's very near. Um, but if you look at East Grinstead's business demographics, um, we are probably more biased towards retail um, compared to the other towns in Mid Sussex. It's possibly due to the tourist influx and their thirst for shopping. Um, we've got many boutique shops. We've got the pretty high street, as I mentioned. But as we know, retail has been particularly hard hit by COVID and this year of, of the many lockdowns. Um, one of the things we try to do to help, you know, the business community and um, the people of East Grinstead, uh, we took, the team took on the task of contacting all businesses in the area to find out what their offerings and their situations were during lockdown. Um, this gave us a good opportunity to build a central database on our website to help the local people find out who is open, what is open, what they offer, and how they are trading. Uh, hence, promoting a long established idea of keeping business local where we can. Uh, we don't only have retail, of course, we've got many businesses in East Grinstead. We've got business parks, we've got lots of professional services, and a lot of these have historically fed into Gatwick Airport. But as we all know, and especially you know, through Gatwick Diamond, Gatwick Airport and the aviation industry has been hit very hard too. Um, but despite this, um, East Grinstead has managed to retain a thriving business community, um, but it's had to adapt. Um, and we're lucky as the EGBA that we're in the middle of um, our business community. So we've been able to help where we can. Um, uh, the EG Bro was originally formed as um, East Grinstead Chamber of Commerce, um, and this was changed many moons ago to the Business Association, and we're a not-for-profit organisation. Um, we normally have two paid part-time members of staff, with the committee and I being purely voluntary. We're also lucky to have a representative from our Town Council and a representative from Mid-Sussex District Council who sit within our committee. Our business manager, Kate Bennett, is here with us today. Hopefully she'll be waving. Um, unfortunately though, our marketing administrator has recently resigned. So we are currently seeking a part-time marketing administrator. So I'll use that opportunity to see if anybody knows anyone. <laughs> um, obviously an exciting job opportunity. <laughs> um, the ethos of East Grinstead Business Association has always been connecting and supporting local business with local people and our mission is to be the voice of local business and these statements of ours have turned out to be even more important during this pesky pandemic um, like many of our local businesses we've had to adapt as well face-to-face uh, -face networking meetings feel like an eon ago um, and a lot of our members have expressed how much they've missed them as martin said and we've even lost members due to the lack of face-to-face -face meetings and they've said they'll return when we can get back to face-to-face. -face. Um, but we do live in the world of Zoom now, um, or Teams. Um, most of our members have embraced it, but some have loathed it. But I think we can all appreciate that some people just don't do technical. Um, here at the Business Association, we believe that video meetings will continue to be a big part of business communications post-pandemic and going forward. Um, it could actually turn out to be a really good thing for the environment with a big reduction in the need to travel. Um, so as a business association, we have to be technical um, moving forward. With our virtual networking events, uh, which started during the first lockdown, uh, the events started as a bit of a slow burner. But as our businesses started to embrace the benefits and adapt their businesses. Um, they found it an invaluable way to stay in touch uh, with members and more importantly, for our members to stay in touch with other members, hence the power of community. Um, we are proud, uh, we have always been proud to work in close partnership with Mid Sussex District Council. It has actually become a bit more of a relationship now <laughs> rather than a partnership. 
as information gets shared both ways. Um, we're also very lucky to have Mims Davis, our MP for Mid Sussex, as our chairperson. Um, Mims, as you probably all know, has been very proactive within the Mid Sussex business community. And I know she has through Burgess Hill and Hayward Heath. Um, and she's always been willing to attend our networking events to enlighten us about what's going on from a government perspective. Um, and I feel that the power of community, especially uh, with Mid Sussex District Council, I think they have certainly proved their worth during this last year or so. Um, the speed they've been able to push through funding and grants to our businesses has really helped. Um, and as the business association and the other business associations, we've been the perfect conduit to pass on that information, um, which has helped our businesses immensely. Um, we do have, we're lucky to have a very close relationship with Haywards Heath and Burgess Hill Business Associations. Um, we do have regular meetings. We share valuable information that could help our members um, and help the particular demographics that each of our town's businesses cover. Um, so I am hopeful that in this shrinking world, we can build a closer relationship with Gatwick Diamond Business and Manor Royal um, Bid, <laughs> um, which in turn gives our members a bigger platform to pr promote their businesses and to raise any issues um, yeah. especially as we have the voice and the ears of local authorities. Um, when it comes back to the power community, the EGBA does have another string to its bow, um, which is very different to the other networking associations and organisations. Um, whereas coming back to East Grinstead is a tourist hotspot, um, we, as the business association, we run and manage Visit East Grinstead the website in association with our town council. Most towns or towns that have a tourism flavour will have a visit this town type website. This means that we receive information news both business wise and community wise. Um, and it also gives us the opportunity to spread our information. We can choose whether it's business related, it's community related, it's public related. You know, we've got the two portals to spread information um, and to receive information. Uh, we did manage to, during the lockdown, refurbish Visit East Grinstead. Uh, that was quite a big job and there's still lots of more information to go on there. And we do carry a small amount of advertising on it, um, which helps, but the site does get over 20,000 visits a month. Um, so being a tourist town, it, it does turn out to be, it does help business, uh, when people turn up in the town. Um, a big plus is that we've got a business directory on there um, that any business in the area can register for, it's free. Um, and we have found that being a Google authoritative website, um, businesses have um, really been helped by the great God Google when you know search terms are coming up. Um, and our members get a, lay, a raised listing, which is really useful for them. Um, so yes, the power of community working together is key. Um, I think that's enough from me. I yep. hope you've got a flavor of what we do at the EGBA. We yes. strongly believe in community. And uh, if you would like further information, just search EGBA, but be careful. We're not the European Gaming and Betting Association. Um, <laughs> And I look forward to catching up with some of you in the breakout rooms. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lee. That's, that's very helpful. And good to hear about that, that sort of extra dimension you've got in terms of the tourism side. Mm. So now I'm going to hand over to Claire, Haywards Heath Business Association. Claire, you've got something a bit different for us, I think. A little, a little different. Um, when, thank you so much for this opportunity as well. I have to say thank you. And when, um, when it came into our inbox, uh, our business manager, Sue, who give a quick wave, Sue, um, and I got our brains together and sort of thought about the topic. And then we reached out to our committee um, to put a little video together, which is what we've got for you this morning. So actually, and it's a short video, you'll be pleased to know. <laughs> if, you're, if it's possible to play it, that'd be great, Sally. Yes. 
So we're now going to have video envy from the other associations. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, oh, great. We tested this earlier and it worked. Typical. Sorry, here we go again, take two. My name is Claire Jones and I'm the chair of the Hayes Heath Business Association. And in this short video, my fellow committee members are going to tell you a little bit about how we've empowered our local business community. Last summer, we explored a couple of ideas of how to support the local business community. With the help of one of our members, we designed a simple poster. Retail owners were able to display this in their shop windows, whilst members and residents could share it across social media, supporting the local business community. This initiative was done in conjunction with our friends at Haywards Heath Town Team, the Yorkshire Shopping Centre and our local councils. The reason for this campaign is to bring about a sense of community and to share a united message across the town and our local villages. We wanted our local businesses to not only survive but prosper in these difficult times. The District Council and the Home Seat Business Association have always worked closely over grants, but this has gone to a whole new level during COVID. Uh, it's been an incredibly powerful relationship. The business community has linked into the District Council and the Business Association has been instrumental in that. The District Council has gone from a standing start to giving out over £60 million worth of grants. And it's the work of the Business Association working with revenues and benefits people, helping put that into play in English. So businesses have been very clear as to what grants they can apply for. And on the other hand, the Business Association has been working with its business community to help them and signpost them into the District Council so they can get the best possible grant for their needs. Um, I've got no doubt whatsoever that if it wasn't for that kind of teamwork, um, we could possibly have lost more jobs and businesses. So it's been exceptional. Another way the HHBA has helped our local business community is by working with Chichester College Group and the DWP to get 16 to 24 year olds back to work via the Kickstart scheme. Events have always been an important part of the Hayward Heath Business Association membership. And in 2020, the HHBA pivoted to delivering these events online. The focus has been on keeping the network and community connected. Firstly, by giving people access to important governmental information and local council contacts that have been vital in getting access to funding and grants. And secondly, it's about keeping people connected and allowing people to share the skills amongst the community that are really helping businesses to survive during this pandemic. In 2021, we're looking to the future and looking to curate a content programme that helps businesses in the local area thrive. We're looking at two key content, content areas to help do this. Firstly, by digesting the macro factors and economic forces that are impacting businesses across the UK, into important strategy and tactics for local businesses in the area. And secondly, bringing our community back together in person for live networking events. The aim is for people to network and do business. And to do this safely, we're tapping into the events and hospitality experts who are members of the HHBA, not only to do this in line with government guidelines, but also to ensure that everybody is safe and that businesses can keep thriving for the future. I hope you've enjoyed that very quick whistle stop tour of the Hayes Heath Business Association. If you'd like to find out more information, or maybe you'd even like to come to one of our events this year, then go to our website, that's hhba.co.uk, and look on to an event. We'd love to see you there. As a shameless plug to come to an event as well, of which I make no apologies. <laughs> I suppose that's the pain. For me. I suppose the painful bit, Claire, is having to watch yourself over and over again. You know. Oh, yes. I would personally yeah. find that difficult for me anyway. I'm sure it's like... <laughs> you know, I've got used to it. Of, I'm in danger of giving a compliment and my team knows that I don't give compliments. So uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll step back from there. But that was, uh, that was, that was really good. Um, right. So we're now going to have yet another complimentary, but I suspect very different perspective as well from... Steve Sawyer, Manor Royal Business Improvement District. I'm tempted here to wax lyrical, lyrical about the Manor Royal, but I will leave that to you, Steve. 
and you need to unmute yourself. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, guys, if you're on um, speaker view, probably best to go to gallery view. For some reason, I don't really look so great on Zoom, which is a real shame because in real life, I'm really bloody handsome. Jeff will tell you, isn't it, Jeff? That's, isn't that right, oh, eh? Yes, yes. Amazing. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> I think I really much. miss the fact we haven't met in person for 12 months, Steve. I, I can tell you. I'm, I'm even better looking now. It's very difficult. Uh, anyway, um, enough of that. Thank you. Uh, okay, look, uh, uh, collaboration. Here's the thing, just in case you don't know, uh, Manor Royal um, is is the biggest business park in the southeast of England, and uh, it's one of the biggest business parks in the UK. I know size isn't everything, but that's just a fact. Um, and since 2013, um, it's also been home to the UK's largest business improvement district. And happily, it's been my privilege to have been the um, executive director right from the very start uh, in 2013. Um, and, you know, if I can say, I think uh, the Manor Royal uh, bid has been very successful uh, since it began. Uh, it's literally attracted millions of pounds of additional investment into the area, and it's set to um, attract millions more. It's also nationally recognised by having won awards and uh, featured in best practice guides. It's delivered loads of projects. And in 2018, because business improvement districts can only run for five year terms before businesses have to vote for them again. In 2018, it was renewed with an improved mandate uh, where 85% of all the businesses here voted to keep it going. You know, and I, uh, just through my association with the Manor bid, I sit on two industry bodies nationally. Um, so here's my take, is looking back to when we all started in 2013, I've got is a really simple um, attitude to collaboration. You know, really, really straightforward in the beginning. Don't need it. Too much like hard work. And so, you know, why bother? Unless you have to, don't do it, right? Um, if I could do it myself, I did it myself. And if I couldn't do it, I'd learn how to do it. And that way, I was keeping costs down. And you know what? not collaborating was really working because in those early days we delivered super fast broadband we installed all the kind of security infrastructure across the mount royal we delivered a five acre park loads of events loads of stuff going on brilliant not collaborating was really really working or so it seemed you know, outwardly it looked like it was working but the truth of it was it really wasn't, and you wouldn't have noticed this uh, looking from the outside, and only those perhaps closest to me would really know how it was affecting actually me personally. Um, you know, things were getting harder by not collaborating. In a, in, a, in a way, you know, I was in a way breaking down. And that was um, obviously really bad news because everything was um, so reliant on me. Um, actually it puts the whole of the bid at risk and you know if I hadn't learned to collaborate um, and I'm a bit of a slow learner but hey um, but if I hadn't learned to do this it might be that there would be no bid today and I certainly wouldn't be here sitting here now talking to you um, about my experience of it so here's what I learned painfully is I learned that things are always more fun when you do them with someone else. Now you can interpret that however you like. Um, but actually, from our point of view, working in the manual bid, and from my point of view, it was a critical lesson in, uh, in a way survival, but hopefully in success, because it was only at that point where I realized that things were breaking down. I needed to lean on other people. I needed other people to help make manual work, the manual bid work, it's only when I started to build those relationships of trust and those partnerships with other people and other organizations that could add value, when I really started to collaborate, it was actually only then that the Manor Royal bid really started to take shape and to drive on and become the success I think it has become. Um, it's a really hard lesson uh, for me, but you know what? The ethos of business improvement districts nationally and indeed in Manor Royal, are all they are founded 
on this collective spirit of unity, this idea of working together and jointly investing in something to achieve something more by collaboration than you could ever hope to achieve uh, by working alone. Um, and so here's my take homes for collaboration, okay? Because for me, collaboration, for it to really work, it's got to tick a few boxes. If it don't tick the boxes, it don't work, it ain't collaborating. So here's my boxes. So for number one, it's got to be more than just a transaction, okay? It's got to be a meeting of minds and energy where you all are driven to try to achieve a shared objective. It's got to be a win-win. So you've got to form a relationship where you are both getting something out of it. So it's, it's got to be both give and, it's got to be give and take. Of course, it's got to add value to your objective. If it doesn't do that, then it's, it's, it's a collaboration of, of really no worth. And here's the last one for me, you know, for collaboration to really be great and to really, really work, it's got to be fun, all right? And it really helps. And it all comes down to people at the end of the day, and the Manor Royal Beard, GDB, and all the other associations, it always comes down to great people. So for, for it to really work, it's got to be fun. You've got to enjoy spending the time with whoever it is you're working with, because if you don't, it's going to be really bloody hard work. So you've got to try and spend time in a relationship that you enjoy. And if you're not enjoying it, you're probably in the wrong relationship. And that's just the way it is, okay? So this, as I say, is the guiding principle for, for how we work in the Manor Rule bid now. Um, it wasn't how we used to do it. Um, that was my mistake. Um, people taught me to put it right. And now I'm much more open to the fact that um, I don't know everything and that to be successful, you need other people. Um, and, and here's the guiding principle that we use in the Manor Royal Bid as well is that, you know, unless you ab absolutely have to work with someone, there's absolutely no alternative. Let's make sure the people that we work with are the people we enjoy working with. At the end of the day, if it ain't fun, you probably ain't doing it right. So thanks very much, Jeff. Really appreciate that. And uh, it's been good talking to you. Well, thanks, Steve. That, that message on fun is so massively important. And, and, and I think actually it, it, it runs through all, all the organizations represented here today. Certainly we put a huge uh, amount of value on it at, at, at GDB. And thank you for, you know, sharing those perspectives with us and for being so open on your own sort of personal, personal journey, which, which I wasn't aware of, not quite in those terms anyway. So thanks a lot for that. It was really, really interesting and I think very, very helpful.